Hey everyone, this is another tutorial about audio and contact and Sibelius and all that. I know it was a while ago when I did my last one and I said I was going to do more. That was like two years ago. But uh, I guess that never happened. But here I am doing another one and you might notice I'm still using Sibelius 4. It's because I absolutely hate Sibelius 5 and Sibelius 6. Well, I haven't actually used 6, but I imagine it can't be much different from what I've read. I may actually be switching to Finale at some point in the future, but uh, I'll talk about that later. What I want to talk about today is some more advanced notation features that you can use in Sibelius and pretty much in any version of Sibelius. And this will allow you to get much more detailed with your notation and your compositions and allow you to get a better result. So I'm just going to start a new score, and I'm only going to use one instrument. I'm going to use uh, violin, just for the heck of it. So we have our violin treble staff here. And the first thing I need to do before writing music is I have to come over into contact and I have to get some sounds. And I'm still doing things the way I used to, except now I'm in Windows 7. So MIDI yoke wouldn't work actually probably because I'm a 64-bit, not because I'm in Windows 7. I'm in 64-bit system now, so I had to find something new to... Uh, to use to go between Sibelius and Contact is a virtual MIDI cable. So I used Loop B, which has uh, been working really well for me. It does the exact same thing. And um, it's right down here in my, uh, my taskbar. And you can, uh, this is what Loop B30 looks like. And it works on 64 bit systems, so I can use the 64 bit samplers like 64-bit contact and play and all that. So, um, you know, it's just in here, pretty much the same as it was in the other tutorial. And, uh, yeah. So if you want to know how to do that, you can go watch the last tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and load up a violin sound. Let's do sustain. So I have my violin sound loaded now. And you can use the usual. This is the sustain sound. So it has kind of a slower attack to it, and it's much softer than, say, the forte piano sound, which is a little bit more harsh. And, of course, the pizzicato sound, which is plucking. So I'll just unload all those for a minute. So channel one, we have a violin over here on channel one. Yay, C major. That's pretty soft, so suppose you want something a little more intense or maybe action oriented on your C major chord. First thing I would do is you can go up to the play, transform, live, playback, and you can set the velocity of your notes and the velocity is pretty much how hard it hits the notes and it's a number between 0 and 127 um, in the sounds there's pretty much settings so from anywhere from like say 0 to 40 it's gonna be a certain level and like 40 to 60 it's gonna be a certain level those aren't the numbers I'm just making up numbers but just to try and make a point so if I set this to 127 It's much louder and a little bit more um, hard hitting. So that's one way to go about getting your sounds a little bit different. One thing I really like to do is um, you can go view live playback velocities and it'll show you this little bar above your notes that you can use to actually manually control the velocity of all these notes. So let's move this out of the way for a minute. So right now it sounds like this. This is really helpful for if you want to like go in and fine tune all your velocities without having to go play, transform, live playback, etc. But you can only use this if you've already done the transform live playback on your notes. So suppose this isn't uh enough you want to do a little bit more 
Well, you can also do program changes with, uh, with advanced notation in Sibelius. So we don't want, just want our sustained sound. So over in contact, we're going to come into contact and we're going to create a new bank. So we come up here to the little floppy disk and go new instrument bank. And now we have this bank and you can put sounds in each one of these banks in here all the way up to 128. A really great thing about this is it allows you to save on your MIDI channels so you can have, you know, 128 sounds on channel 1, 128 sounds on channel 2, and so on. So let's just start with our sustain sound in the first channel, or the first uh, patch in our bank. And let's say we want a tremolo for the second one. And... Always got to have our pizzicato. So now we have these three different sounds all on channel one. And in Sibelius, it's, uh, it's not going to work. How do, you go, how do you go between them? So if you click on your notes, you can type essentially a little code in there. And it starts. So actually what the first thing you do, you click on your notes and you hit control plus E. And this brings up a little cursor line thingy I beam. So you can type, and you start with tilde, and you go P1. And that's telling it to use our first patch over here in contact, which is the sustain. Ah, it works. So we have our sustain, and as you can imagine, what we'd probably want to do to go to the next patch is we can just double click on our P1 here and we just place one with a 2. Tremolo. Pizzicato. No problem. So to get that little uh, bit of text to show up, it's actually a hidden object. So you have to click on your notes, all three of them, like click on that part of the measure. And to do that, you can shift click on your notes like this. And that will show your hidden text. Now, I think a really a much better way to do this is to go view hidden objects, and there it is. It's just always there. It will show you every hidden object in your score. It's also worth noting that this should work with any sampler that supports banks and, and patches and what have you. Another really good way to control dynamics between your instruments is to go to Window Mixer, and you can control the volume over here in the mixer, volume up and down, you can control the pan. Anything below 63 is completely to the left, or more to the left, and anything above 63 is more to the right. 63 is the closest to halfway you get between 127, because that's the maximum amount you can have for a MIDI message. So anything like right in the middle is going to be pan to the center except you can't have like 63 and a half or whatever now this mixer does look a lot different in Sibelius 5 and Sibelius 6 which I'll talk about now why I don't like Sibelius 5 and I'll go ahead and launch that and show you okay so we have Sibelius 5 open here and at first it looks pretty similar and in fact a lot of the features and the way it works are pretty similar except when you go to play playback devices this is a lot different now, it doesn't work like Sibelius 4. You can't simply set your loop B, which is this internal MIDI right here, as your MIDI cable and just go straight to contact. Of course, that would be way too simple. You actually have to go in and create or download manual sound sets for all your VSTs, and you have to use things like contact and play engine and whatever else is a VST instrument. You have to use it as a VST. The biggest problem with this is that, for one, I haven't found sound sets for Sibelius 5 for these, um, for these instruments, and which means you have to make them yourself, which is incredibly complicated. I tried to get the sound set maker, and I was just like, what on earth is this? Um, the other problem is that Sibelius is a 32-bit application, which is really an issue, especially when you start using huge sample packs like play with like the choirs or the orchestra or whatever. You can only reference three gigs of RAM 
So you can only load so many instruments and then they start dropping out or performance cuts out and it's, it's just not good. Now an alternative to this, I guess, is to get an application called JBridger. I'll post all links down below in the description. But apparently JBridger is a, works like a VST that allows you to bridge between Sibelius or Finale or whatever to standalone VST so you can use your VSTs in 64-bit mode. I haven't had experience with JBridger or if you need to uh, use sound sets with JBridger. And I'm probably not going to buy it because I'm planning on upgrading to Finale. So that is why I do not like Sibelius 5. And you notice I have the internal MIDI set right now, which is my Loop B. So if I try to use that, I'll show you what happens. So just add our violin here, whatever. And we have our mixer open already. And I'll change this to internal MIDI channels one like it's supposed to be and get ready for some fireworks okay so it didn't create fireworks because loop b which is great about it will automatically mute your midi ports if it detects feedback and this is what happens when sibelius when you try to use a midi cable with sibelius is it will just infinitely loop and feedback for some reason I don't know why I haven't been able to fix it I haven't been able to find help online and so then it will just get screwed up Sibelius will lock up and this is yet the other problem with Sibelius 5 I don't know if it's fixed in 6 I imagine but it will never actually close the application so I can go in here to the task manager and Sibelius end process it closed the window, but the process is still running. And you cannot launch Sibelius again until this process is closed, which means you have to restart your computer. This is very annoying. It really irks me. So that said, I will most definitely be switching to, con or to Finale at some point as soon as I just get around to not being cheap skate. Now, a couple of cool features in Contact. Um... I really like the mixer here. You just go on to like the little slider level thingies up here at the top. And you can see your channels here. Now what I've done to get it to play through my speakers, you just go to configure and you can change the uh you can change what uh what channel it outputs to. So that's about it for uh for this tutorial. Hopefully I'll be doing more um maybe on recording and mixing and stuff like that. Have fun writing out there, everybody. See you later.